I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. I think that this Christian YouTuber with over 3 million subscribers on YouTube is stealing money that people have donated to his ministry and is using said money for personal gain. And I've got some pretty interesting evidence to back up my claim. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. <laughs> and if you're returning, Here's one special for you, just for you, baby. Do you want to have that? You know what to do. Subscribe. Anyways, how are you guys doing? I missed you guys. I hope you guys missed me. It's been crazy, crazy. So that's why I haven't posted in a while. So we are starting to recover. I'm glad that I'm here with you guys. It's been so much shit going on. But yeah, I know you're not here to talk about my drama. Now let's go into the church. <laughs> Because the church got drama, guys. I'm not even surprised at this point. Before we do get started, if you like this kind of topic or if you just like the vibes here, we're all good vibes, honestly. Like, we're like great vibes here. Do me a favor and click on that subscribe button and also like the video down below. It definitely helps out the channel and I love you for that. Going back to the church, I am a Christian myself, if you guys don't know that. As a Christian myself, one thing that I am is very, very critical about the church. And I know, you might look at me and be like, why am I being critical? I'm a Christian. I shouldn't be critical about church. Like I said, I didn't say I'm critical about God. I said I'm critical about church because I have had my fair share of Jesus come down and save us all and anyone that was religious or that is religious right now knows what i'm talking about because drama doesn't discriminate like the subscription isn't just for one religion it goes everywhere i saw a video about this with one other creator he's a bigger creator i think his name is marky or something like that i watch him all the time and i like his commentary but basically this story starts with one christian tiktok influencer i don't think he's He's only limited to TikTok. I think he does like things across like the whole social media platform, but he's a pretty known Christian influencer. I don't know him, but apparently he is. He made a TikTok video about a certain pastor slash minister slash prophet slash everything. And he basically said that he suspects him for misusing funds, which he brought receipts, y'all. So. I was like, that's suspicious. Yeah, that's, that's weird. We all know like when pastors are having private jets and having flashy cars and stuff like that, you do need to look at the bank accounts and you do need to look at where that money is coming from and where that money is going. That is my own opinion. I've seen situations whereby churches are, or the ministers and the pastors of those churches are flying private jets. 99% of people are never going to fly a private jet. So if you're ministering to people, how are you flying private jets? How are you buying G-Wagons like every other, I don't know, weekend? It's really, really fishy to me. And everything that he said is also given red flags because I had to think about it and I was like, Hmm, this is really, really weird. So we're gonna watch the video. Before we do, I need you to prepare for the ride. So grab your snacks, grab your drink, your water, and I'm gonna play the video. I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. I think that this Christian YouTuber with over 3 million subscribers on YouTube is stealing money that people have donated to his ministry and is using said money for personal gain. And I've got some pretty interesting evidence to back up my claim. This is Taylan Seaman, AKA Taylan Michael, and he is a self-proclaimed social media guru. Don't believe me, you can buy his course for a couple thousand dollars. And he is the founder of Revival Way Ministries. Now, according to their website, Revival Way Ministries, again, founded by Taylan, has three core programs. First, feeding hungry children in third world countries, second, reaching people with the gospel, and third, seeing said people accept Christ as their personal savior. So when you donate money to Revival Way, this is what you're hoping your money goes towards. Now here's red flag number one. After looking through the IRS website for a couple of hours, which is as exciting as it sounds, I discovered that Revival Way Ministries does not have a tax ID number. As far as the IRS is concerned, Revival Way Ministries does not exist. Here's why that's a problem. If you don't have a tax ID number, if you haven't filed with the IRS, 
you can't have a bank account for your organization. So unless Talon has set up a separate organization under a different name, any donations that people make through the website or through social media is more than likely going directly into his personal bank account. Further evidence of this can be found through Revival Way's Venmo and PayPal, which have had their usernames altered to say Revival Way, but are still underneath Taylor Seaman's government name. Hold on there, Josh. Regardless of the bank account, according to Taylor's Instagram, they sold $250,000 worth of those donations into other ministries. For example, according to Taylor, they fed 24,000 kids through Feed the Hungry last year. Don't get me wrong, that's awesome. But according to Feed the Hungry's website, you can feed 125 kids for $25. So quick math tells us that if they fed 24,000 kids, they donated roughly $4,800 to Feed the Hungry. Which begs the question, where did the other $245,000 go? Because there's no other mention on Talon's Instagram or the Revival Way Ministries website of other partners or organizations they're working with. Maybe some of that $245,000 went towards the dream car that Talon just bought, that he paid cash for, by the way. Or maybe it was some of the private jet flights or the luxurious lifestyle he and his wife are living. Some of you may be thinking, Josh, you're speculating. Maybe he took all of that money and poured it into his YouTube, his social media, so that he can create quality videos that preach the gospel and reach the masses for spreading the good news about Jesus, right? I kid you not. These are the last six videos that he posted on YouTube. So we're really preaching the gospel over here. Now, I'm not trying to bash Talon because the reality is he's not the only guy that's doing this. We've got to call this stuff for what it is. It's lying. It's stealing all for the sake of Talon getting to live his prosperity gospel wet dream. Now I'm making some crazy claims. So Talon, if you wanna make a video refuting these claims and showing some financial transparency, transaction history, you could probably use the views, why not? If you can prove me wrong, I'll delete this video and promote your course for free. Balls in your court, big dog. Red flag number one, buying courses. Y'all know my stance in buying courses. I hate the idea of buying courses. I feel like people buying courses now, it's the new scam because technically you're teaching somebody, you're not selling them a product. It's like, well, I'm teaching you. So if you fail, it's not on me. It's on you for not implementing whatever I want you to. I can do another video on that if you guys want, but buying courses now is the new scam, especially when you're buying it for thousands of dollars. That's red flag number one. Do not buy any course for more than 15 bucks, okay? Harvard has free courses. Why are you paying thousand dollars to buy a course? Red flag number two, if you are receiving donations from people, you need to register as a charity. You can't just receive donations and not have a tax ID number. As long as you're receiving money from anybody like you can register as a charity for the community you can register as a charity for abroad whatever it is like you are receiving money you need to have a tax id and the irs needs to know where that money is coming from okay so as you can see he definitely did bring a lot of evidence and he's basically saying that things are not adding up okay like two and two is not four in this equation so where is the rest of the money going this situation also happened with one of um a streamer i forgot i'll probably put it here whereby it was like where's the money going to kind of thing honestly <sighs> Tax people, prove me wrong, okay? Maybe, I'm just saying, this is all speculation. I am not saying that I have done this. I am not saying that I would do this. But one thing that I've noticed, and I feel like charities do this all the time, is that the way the IRS is set up, there is literally so many loopholes to scam if you want to. So when I'm talking about loopholes, what I mean is that charities usually inflate their books. So they will inflate things like their expenses. It's like there's so many infinite opportunities for you to inflate your expenses. And the thing is, if you have the receipts like, oh, I went on a trip to have this event, even though the trip should cost you maybe like $200 with economy class tickets, you end up taking business class for like $1,000. And that's how that expense is inflated. You can decide to save 600 bucks if you want to or $800. But they won't they just inflate those expenses and that's what i'm saying that there are infinite loopholes for this 
And because these businesses have or these charities have labeled these things as expenses, it gets to be written off during like the tax period. Like you can write it off as a tax write off or whatever. So like these are the infinite loopholes that people have and, you know, the charities have. And I see that's why a lot of people don't really support charities like that, especially big ones. But that to say is that there are so many ways to scam if you wanted to at least scam legally don't take my word for it i'm just saying this is what a lot of charities do i feel like there's like so much loopholes that you can actually take advantage of if you were really like a bad person which i believe a lot of charities do to be honest but that being said we're gonna go ahead and watch his taylor's taylor I'm she's not a girl it's miss taylor we're gonna go ahead and watch Taylor's response to this. <sighs> Let me just give you some heads up. The response wasn't looking good, okay? It was like, what are you saying right now? Hey Josh, saw how much you liked my new car, so I figured I'd make this response video in front of it for you. Here's the first piece of transparency that you requested. Revival Way Incorporated official legal documents of being a nonprofit entity based out of the state of Louisiana with a state ID number. And then you also asked for some financial transparency, which I thought was very funny. So I just took two seconds to grab one bank statement off of my desk so I could show you how much we gave to one organization last year. Here are the bank statements of my tithes and offerings that I gave just last year, simply just to my church, $239,128.62, as well as another $35,000 toward our building pledge. And as for my vehicle, I did pay for it cash and not one penny came out of my ministry. I have seven other businesses that I run full time as well, and they paid for my vehicle. So I'll take my free shout out now, big dog. Yeah, so the response is pretty cringy, not gonna lie, because he's in front of his new G-Wagon and I'm like, Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Another thing that I wanted to say that I kind of found weird was the bank statements that he has. Anybody can fake bank statements. We all know that. I didn't even see the logo of the bank that he has. And it's all in like tithes, tithes, um, offerings and stuff like that. I don't know. It just feels weird. I've never like worked in the financial department of a church before. So I really don't know the ins and outs. But from a bank perspective... I think those will be either labeled like maybe like expenses or, you know, like miscellaneous or something like that. I don't think it will be like maybe like tights or something like that, or it will be labeled donations. So that's where my alarm barrels are going off. This is me thinking that that is not a real bank statement. I don't see the logo of the bank. It's something that you can basically type up and just like print it out and stuff like that that being said he didn't really address a lot of the allegations that were made one of the allegations being you can feed the kids for forty two hundred dollars i believe that's what um he said you can feed twenty four thousand kids for like forty eight hundred dollars or something less than 5k so it's like, where's the rest of the money? Where are the other ministries that you put the money in? If you put that huge amount of money into a ministry, I for one believe that those ministries should be mentioned. Another thing that he didn't really say, or he didn't even say anything at all, to be honest, was how come your cash app is your name? Why is it underneath your name? That's why he said the first time, like, if you first of all there's no tax id i think the picture that um taylor tried to show with the bank statements had like a tax id or something if you're creating anything for your business why are you creating it underneath your name especially when it's a charity you should create it underneath the business name so underneath revival way or revival studios i don't know that's a nice name for studio he didn't say anything about that he was just standing in front of his g-wagon that's why i think it was it's very very fishy the video is actually still up as i am recording this the comments are obviously turned off luckily you can download the video 
from TikTok itself. But the comments are turned off. I guess people are asking, where's the money? And I noticed that. And I noticed it from like other of his videos that he posts on TikTok or YouTube. But people just keep on asking, hey, where's the money? I think people are just trolling now. Honestly, I don't have it in chronological order. But I know that Taylan reaches Josh and he's threatening to sue him. So quick update on the Taylan Michael situation. He's threatening to sue over my last video, hence why it has become a situation. But we'll get to that. Since I posted that video about Taylan on Friday, I had hundreds of people, I kid you not, hundreds of people DMing me, commenting, people that know Taylan personally, people that have gone to his church or go to his church in Louisiana, people that went to college with him, reaching out to tell me stories, experiences, places to look, things of that nature. So that's what I've been doing all weekend, is just diving in, kind of like an investigative journalist, it's been kind of fun, diving in and really trying to make sure that I'm factual and accurate with the things I say and the questions I ask. Just for the sake of clarity, I will be posting a video tomorrow basically responding to his video to me, which if you guys saw that video, his answers were inadequate at best. It left us with more questions even on what's going on financially, things of that nature. So I will be posting that video tomorrow. But as for the potential lawsuits, Taylan has given me 24 hours to remove the original video or he'll be suing me for defamation and slander. Fortunately for us and unfortunately for Taylan, he's bluffing. In fact, I'm fairly certain he wrote that DM himself, not his legal team. I'm not gonna let a guy that thinks he has a ton of money bully me into doing anything. So the video will stay up and the video with all of my investigative findings will be posted tomorrow. Also, one last thing, please don't harass Talon or his family, especially. It's okay to ask hard questions and hold someone accountable, but let's keep it clean on that front. And with that being said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. First of all, from what I understand is that's not how you do things. Lawyers comment on this. I, if you want to sue someone, I don't think you message them on Instagram. I think you have to present, you have to mail them a physical document for your intention to sue or something like that. You don't just message through the DM. It's just like, oh, if you don't take this down by da 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 da, you know, we're gonna sue you kind of stuff. I don't think that works in the legal court system. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're just trying to threaten him just so he can take the video down, which he's not getting budged by which is good. Okay, so basically everything he says that we kind of spoke about and we kind of covered them, like they, he didn't really say anything in his response, but our little Revival Way Ministries decided to respond to the whole backlash that they're getting. I don't have the original video because to God help me, I couldn't find the video. So we're just gonna watch a reaction of Josh himself talking about it. Most of what Josh is saying is basically what I agree with when churches start to give red flags especially when they're talking about things like the bible said you were gonna attack the church and look at us now we're being persecuted because they made that kind of statement i know crazy but we're just gonna watch that here so faith church rustin and the podies responded and to no one's surprise they denied any sort of wrongdoing both financial and otherwise so in today's video i actually want to highlight some of the things that the podies have said both in their response and just in sermons in general it's one thing for me to show stories that victims have shared with me that i believe to be true but then the podies can just respond and say uh-uh uh, that didn't happen but it's another thing for me to show you clips of things they themselves have said we're getting persecuted like jesus said we would so that's a very interesting thing to say out loud because the large majority of people myself included that are calling for some sort of transparency here are christian to be clear faith church rustin and the Pody family aren't being persecuted for their beliefs myself and a lot of the alleged victims are just calling for some sort of accountability in fact stan and mary don't take my word for it i think your daughter who's a pastor on staff as well actually said it best when she said when something like a sin comes out about a pastor it's not always the devil trying to attack them rather someone's sin finding them out actually is the mercy of god jesus said there would be offenses it, it's just a given people are going to get offended mm -hmm. we've been here for 21 years and over 21 years of course you're going to have people who get offended my wife and i died laughing when we heard this part hate how casual mary Pody's making all of this sound now if it was like two or three people hey maybe they have an axe to grind who knows but the fact that there have been hundreds of people with just disgusting stories about faith church they make you want to puke you know and the fact that they're like hey people get offended they leave sometimes that's not normal i'm here to tell you i've been a part of many churches this is not normal church activity at all. Anyways, moving on from their response, I now want to show you what a regular church service looks like at Faith Church Rustin. Um, let's do that real quick. 
You can go. This is good ground. It's good ground. It's good ground. We break this thing tonight. Don't be ashamed. That was a video of Pastor Stan Pody lying on the floor of his church during their Millionaire Boot Camp series, while another speaker prompts other members of the church to go up to Stan's borderline unconscious body and lay money on him. Just to be clear, throwing money at a pastor while he lays on the floor with his eyes closed like some sleepy stripper isn't normal activity. It's not. You can already hear the pastors and the members of the church, hey, you took that out of context. No, I didn't. Uh, what context is that correct in? Also, did you know that Stan Pody wrote a song called Money Cometh and they sing it during church? Not normal activity. Next video I'm going to show you is a clip from one of Kinsey Pody's sermons at Faith Church Ruston. You just need to take control and command because Jesus is not in control. Did you know that? God is not in control. It's unbiblical. God is not in control. I think what that sermon illustrates, even if they don't realize it, is what the Podies actually want. More than money, more than clout, they want control. I believe that to be true from the multiple stories I've heard from people claiming that the Podies wanted to control their finances, their employment opportunities, their dating lives. Nothing about this is normal. Also, I do want to add to that. If you in your church have a high turnover rate, there's a problem. There's no way else to sugarcoat this. If you have a high turnover rate in your church, like people are coming and they're leaving as fast as they come, there's a problem with that church. Nothing else can prove me wrong because if people are leaving, then either there's something wrong with the way the church operates as itself or the way they preach the word. That is my opinion. And I feel like I stand with multiple people on this because sometimes I've actually seen stories and heard stories. And actually I have experienced stuff where you join a church and it all looks good and dandy the first couple of months or even not even months I think months it's given it a kind of uh, I think couple of months is actually very it's given it a benefit of the doubt but like the first couple of weeks you start to see the red flags and then you realize so that okay maybe this is not a church maybe it's a cult but I am very very critical of the church I always have been and I always will be especially when I see some bs that I feel like we need to talk about I am just saying from my own personal experience when a church is more focused on material things than spiritual things it is a red flag for me because you kind of can't tell where the priorities of that church is millionaire boot camp i don't know what the hell that is i have never seen that in my life millionaire boot camp who comes up with this stuff anyways this is given crypto brother scam honestly if i am being super honest with y'all i almost didn't make this video I've been talking to God a lot about, is this a time where we just need to keep the peace? Or is this a time when there needs to be transparency and some sort of accountability? This was still only about Talon and nothing else. Probably would have left it be, right? But this has snowballed into something much bigger thanks to the numerous messages and DMs from current members of Faith Church, ex-members of Faith Church, and people that just live in Ruston in general. There seems to be a unified voice that needs to be heard and the dumb internet Christian comedian's gonna be the guy to do it, I guess. Last thing I'll say, and we'll get right into it, my main goal for this is people to know Jesus. Not prosperity, gospel, young money, cash money, Jesus. Jesus, period. And I believe that Taylor Michael, Pastor Stan Pody, and the organization of Faith Church Rustin has disregarded that goal for their own financial interests. Let's dive in. This is Taylor Michael, and the other day he responded to my asking for financial transparency in his nonprofit ministry. Given that he's always posting private jet flights and the fact that he just paid for, in cash, a $200,000 car. Josh, saw how much you liked my new car, so I figured I'd make this response video in front of it for you. Okay. Cool car, man. Um, what about your house? Because according to this document that was filed by your father-in-law's LLC, he actually owns the house that you live in. And I'm assuming he doesn't charge you rent, uh, but more on him later. Here's the first piece of transparency that you requested. Revival Way Incorporated official legal documents. So we were able to finally track down Talon's nonprofit and come to find out it's not in good standing with the state of Louisiana. But that's not even the weirdest part. You scroll down and look at the listed owners, directors, officers, you name it. Three men are listed, none of which are Talon himself, which I found very interesting. So I could show you how much we gave to one organization last year. Here are the bank statements of my tithes and offerings that I gave just last year, just to my 
church, $239,128. I'll know that's not a real bank statement, but I'm going to assume that that's the amount that Talon claims his nonprofit, Revival Way, donated to his church. Did you know that Talon's father-in-law is also the lead pastor of said church, Faith Church Ruston? Here's a picture of them in front of another private jet. Now, strangely enough, because most of the information on their website is password protected, which is weird, I've been led to believe that the only people that are on church staff and have access to church funds are Talon, his wife, his father-in-law, mother-in-law, and his brother-in-law. That's it. So here we see what looks like Talon flexing that he's donating money, money that he was given, to a church that he's essentially the number two in command at. But from just reading some of these stories from both current and ex-members of the church, it sounds as though Talon's revival way escapade is just a smaller part of a much bigger prosperity gospel operation. Many current and ex-members of the church, who will remain anonymous, of course, seem convinced that Pastor Stan Pody's main priority is financially exploiting anyone that sets foot in their church. For example, on top of the regular tithe, which this church believes should be 20%, they also have special offerings that occur on Pastor Appreciation Month, Stan's birthday, his wife's birthday, their anniversary, Father's Day, Mother's Day, and the church's anniversary. Another source told me that Pastor Pody keeps track of who does and doesn't tithe and has higher members that he'll send out going neighborhood to neighborhood collecting tithe from members that may be behind on their giving. Now, maybe some of you don't have an issue with a pastor leading a church in this manner. Okay, maybe you'll have an issue with this then. According to some of the ex-members that I spoke with, if you voice a concern or decide to leave the church, not only do they treat you horribly, it's not uncommon for the church to create false accusations. Here's an individual that decided to leave Faith Church Ruston, and this is the rumor that the church decided to start about them after they left. Here's another. And another. Now, I know what you're thinking. Some of these stories are tough to believe, and who's to say the church itself was even involved in some of the rumors? Would you believe me if I had a screenshot? of a message Faith Church Rustin's official Instagram account sent to someone after they decided to leave the church? Look at how Evangelist Talon, who is a big representative of Faith Church Rustin, decides to talk to people on Instagram after they don't want to buy his course. At the end of the day, I want more people to know Jesus. For being completely honest, as an onlooking third party, I want Faith Church Ruston to be a great church that fears the Lord. And my hope is that they'll see this video and make changes for the better. Because at the end of the day, I want more people in Ruston, Louisiana, to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the fake gospel of financial prosperity. Now, the people that have come out and messaged him, there's some people that were ex-members of the church. I don't know. I read something about someone saying that when he left the church, the church kind of spread the rumor about him being a groomer or something like that. And then when they tried to confront the church, like, hey, why did you do that? The church was literally like, um, well, why did you leave the church kind of thing? So... Red flag number 5,000 at this point, like, paint the whole room red, because this church is giving... <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. He has posted some videos about it, like the responses and stuff. It's still the same thing. There was nothing that has really come out of this drama. It's just him exposing Revival Way um, in his videos and kind of trying to piece two and two together. Now, like I said, I don't know about this person. I literally saw this on someone else's YouTube channel and I was like, mmm time to follow that train baby but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below is he being too much i also want to know your stories about religion or about like whatever church or mosque or whatever it is that you've attended to before so let me know down below right now please i'm going to be posting videos back on schedule once a week you already know so i'm going to be posting a video every saturday or sunday honestly depending on how i'm going to end that video but i definitely will be able to do that and sometimes i will be posting some shorter content i want to say low effort videos which is just like maybe responding to drama and stuff like that within the week but the schedule is once a week saturday or sunday don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video i really do appreciate it if you do I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. So subscribe to the channel. Join the family, guys. We're trying to get to 500. 500. Actually, we're trying to get to 1,000. So join the family. Let me know what you all think. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Stay true to yourself, king and queens. Huh. All right. Bye. Thank you for Good morning. Me. Morning to you. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay.